So in the last tutorial, I showed you how to make wreaths, you know, just in time for Christmas. If you haven't seen that, go watch it because you are going to be confused. Uh, let me tell you if you haven't seen that. Uh, but in this one, I promised that I would take it up a notch. So you can see that we've added in these orbs and you might think, oh, that's kind of like a lame addition for a tutorial. It's not just that, uh, but also if we kind of zoom into these leaves here, you can see these uh, pine leaves, which are really just grids, but whatever. You don't know that unless you're up close. Uh, they're all different colors now. Um, and that is when you when you zoom out, that adds a lot of realism to this. So uh, both of these additions, they go over a lot of stuff in geometry nodes that might be a bit more complicated than you're used to. So I thought this is a worthy addition. Uh, either way, uh, let's just go back to the version that we left off at. I think I called it demo. Yes. Okay. Um, so in the last part, uh, we made a wreath. Uh, what does it do? It changes shape. Uh, it changes sides and uh, it makes your penis bigger. Uh, so now all we need to do is uh, add in these extra features. So uh, first thing I wanna do is I wanna start off by actually changing the leaf colors. Cause right now what we have is every single uh, pine thing is using this material without any variation to this color. So how do we uh, add in that variation? Good question. Uh, for now, let's uh, bring that over. So uh, if you recall, uh, we have the uh, Taurus that has the pine needles instanced on them. And uh, long story short, we get this final model that the material is applied to. If we want to vary it uh, per the leaf, we actually need to extract the leaf data somehow. Uh, the issue with this is if I visualize this right here, we have the viewer. Uh, you can see we just have the 2,900 instances of the pine needles, right? We don't have any information here. And as of now, I don't think we can use the instance index or anything like that. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to capture the attribute. What attribute do I want to capture? I want to give the information of the points, uh, which is given by the index. Now, if we try to use this right now, it's not going to work because, again, we just have 2,900 instances. Instances basically means Blender's taking a shortcut and we don't actually, actually have the data. So make sure you realize instances. This is going to make it very slow because now we have, let's see, we have uh, 22.7 million uh, vertices that you know we're dealing with at this point. Uh, but you can see now we actually have access to this data, which means we have the model. We're going to capture the index, in other words, the point uh, number, so the 2.7 million of these, and I want to pass this into the shader editor so I can change the color. So let's connect this here. And then for the output, you can see now we've uh, had an attribute added. So this is what that does. We've added in an attribute. We're just going to call this something something uh, useful like the leaf color. color. There we go. Um, and now this should be an attribute that we can send into the shader editor or anywhere else. We can send it to the post office if we want to. So let's try that. I'm going to use a attribute node. So this is kind of the connection. This node is the connection between geo nodes and this. We're going to load in the leaf uh, color. I'm just going to copy that and paste it. And you can see now uh, if we look at this, the entire thing is white. Now this is a bit deceiving, kind of makes it look like this whole thing is set to one and there's not any information here. But really what's happening here is, again, we have the vertex in, uh, instance index index, right? So it goes from zero to 2.7 million. So every single one except for the first one should be white uh, because it's above one. But if we take this and send it through a white noise, you can see that indeed, once we zoom in, we do have a bit more detail here. In fact, um, each of these uh, grid leaves has a bunch of colors on it. Why? Uh, because the leaves are again. Uh, grids, right? They're this three by three plane, meaning there's nine shades on each of these. Well, if we only want one color per, we just do a math. We're going to snap it to, in other words, we're going to round it to the nearest multiple of nine. And you can see now uh, every leaf has its own thing. So again, what happened here, uh, we have all the vertex information, but there's nine vertices per leaf. So we snapped it to the nearest nine and the white noise is just going to take these huge numbers, right? There's still like 2.7 million. I mean, we have snapped it to the nearest nine, but it's still huge. And we just generated random numbers from that. And this is what we can use to drive the random colors. So in fact, if we just kind of plug this in here, uh, you can see we get kind of like this rainbow. This actually looks cool like a unicorn reef or something like that. But uh, you can see how we can use that to randomize it. To make it look good, I'm thinking we just kind of pick two general leaf colors and transition between them. So the first one, I'm just going to copy it from here. Now we can reconnect it. And the second one, I'm going to copy it again. 
There we go. And I'm gonna make it kind of a desat. If I make it all the way desaturated, it'll almost make it look like it snowed and it caught some of that white, uh, which might be the look you're going for. But I'm just gonna make it a tiny bit yellow. So uh, this just looks much more realistic. So again, before, it's all this kind of green. It kind of looks like a... Me and a friend have been watching the Barbie movies. Don't judge, but... Uh, as we kind of go through them, the graphics are getting better and better and better. I mean, we're watching the 2001 to 2004 ones, right? They're getting better and better and better, but the grass and the vegetation just looks stiff and it's all the same color. That's the vibe we have here. Add a bit of variation and it just looks much more hardy, you know, worthy of the 2020 <laughs> Barbie movies. Um, okay, so we've added in the leaf variation. If we want to do any seed changes on that, you just make it four-dimensional, you swap these out, but it doesn't really matter. So that is the first thing we've done to make it look so much better. And the second thing is just adding in like a second level of detail. And by the way, just to mention everything we've set up before, this procedural number of sides, the seed number, it's all going to work with this because uh, the number of vertices per leaf is not going to change. If we were to change this to a different number, uh, you'll notice once we zoom in that there are multiple shades per leaf. You can kind of tell. Uh, so make sure you don't do that. Okay, now let's add in the orbs. Super simple, super simple. It's kind of be like it's going to be the same distribution, uh, but in this case we're going to you know distribute some spheres. So let's do another points distribute. So let me just zoom in. So I'm going to distribute points on faces on our torus. So again, we have this uh, node group right here that makes this distorted uh, torus. I'm going to distribute some new points. We don't need as many, so I'm going to bring down the density. And on this, we want to instance. We want to paste. In other words. Um, on these points, we want to paste a sphere because we just want orbs. And luckily, the whole idea behind this uh, little tutorial series is I don't want to model anything. I want everything to be a node. So it's nice that there's a UV sphere node. Um, I want it to be a UV sphere. Uh, so you can see now if I was to visualize this, and I guess we could either view it like this, and you can see that's a nightmare. And that's basically because there's too many spheres and they're too big. So let's just bring down the size. Let's bring down the size even more. You can see there's a bunch of <laughs> spheres now. If I make it less dense, there you go. You can see there's a bunch of spheres. We could either visualize it like that, or even better is we take everything up till here and we can just join these together. So, and we wanna make sure this is after the material because we want these spheres to have their own material. So, a couple things. First of all, they're too big, obviously. Uh, but second of all, you can see they're kind of uh, faceted. You can, they're, they're shade flatted in some sense. Uh, so, I'm gonna use the set shade smooth on the sphere, uh, which is what gets copied, so that will smooth them out. Um, to make this look better, we need it to be smaller. So I'm just gonna go back to the original radius, and you're thinking, that's the opposite of what you said, whatever. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna drive the uh, scale with this random value, which again, is gonna give us a different size for each of these. So I want the maximum size it could be to be, I don't know, 0.2 or something, we can play with that. Uh, but you can see we have some big ones, we have some small ones, etc. So I'm just gonna bring it down until I like the size. And I guess one other thing to increase the realism is you can't have orbs intersect each other, right? At least not in uh, our house, you wouldn't decorate like that. Whereas with the leaves, you can't tell. Uh, so we wanna kind of fix that. Easy solution uh, for the point distribution, we just wanna distribute them so that no two points can be too close to each other. So that's Poisson disk. And basically it's the same distribution, but now we have this minimum number, uh, which basically lets us um, pick a minimum distance uh, threshold that these points need. So two points can't spawn within this distance of each other. So the bigger this is, the less points we're going to have. Uh, but you can see now we don't have any intersections. The only issue with this, and I want them to be even smaller. I think they're still a bit too big. The only issue with this is the uh, small spheres, which I do want. They add detail. They look cool. Um, they're very buried in here. You can almost not see them. Uh, so I somehow want to push these out without increasing the size. Uh, there's a simple way to do that. So if I look at the points distributed, well, I guess that's not showing. I'll, I'll show it with the uh, spheres, I guess. If I look at the um, spheres distributed on the thing, uh, we want to push them outwards along the normal of the surface, but not change the uh, you know size of them. So let's literally do that. We're going to move them on the normal of the surface. So uh, we distributed these points, which for some reason I can't see. Oh, maybe it's because you need to be in solid view. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set position. In other words, I'm going to change the position of these so you can offset all of them together or whatever. I want to offset them by the normal, so they're going to kind of expand outwards. If it's too much, 
which this, this, this is a uh, really too much. Uh, you just take it, you scale it and you bring down the scale. So when this is zero, it's going to be outlining our distorted sphere, set it to like 0.1 and it's just going to move outwards just a bit, which is going to move the spheres a bit, which we join, which will take a while to show because there's so, so much geometry. Uh, but you can see how these are now further out. So here's before. There, a lot of them are hidden, and then after, I'm going to do it even less than I did, 0.05. That just gives them a bit more visibility, especially the small ones. Okay, uh, so we have that. I, really, you could, you could do a bit more math to make the distribution look a bit prettier, like you can have it push leaves away, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm thinking uh, the last thing we want to do is we want to give this a material. And just like, and this is why I wanted to do both of these in this tutorial, uh, just like we wanted each leaf to be a different color, we want each orb to be a different color, but we have the same issues before where these are just a bunch of instances, right? If we were to look at this, it's 53 instances, no geometry data. Um, so since we know how to change the leaf color, uh, we're just going to kind of repeat that process. So I'm just going to connect all that. Uh, same thing as before. We need this to be geometry. Realize instances gives us, now let's see, uh, 25,000 25, um, vertices. We can use the same capture attribute trick from before uh, to bring this into the shader editor. So I'm going to capture. By the way, if you know of a way to get the instance index, or maybe I just don't know about a node, let me know, because that could save us um, a lot of computation to not have this realize instances, and it's faster. I'm sure there's a workaround, or it's going to be added. So either way, we want the point, the index of uh, these 25,000 points. We're going to pass that out through the modifier, because again, geometry nodes is a modifier. You can see we get a new attribute. I'm going to call it, what should I call it? Orbeez. You remember Orbeez? It's like those uh, toxic things kids kept eating, but they, they did look tasty, so you can't blame them. But Orbeez, whatever. We have that. Uh, we want to have this kind of affect its own material that's only operating on this chain. So I'm going to do another set material. Notice that I'm setting material uh, one for the orbs, one for these, and then they get joined together. So they're going to have different materials. Uh, this one, I'm just going to make a new material. I'm going to call it orbs. Connect that here. So this is using the new material. And you'll notice right now they're kind of invisible because they should be green because it's the same material. Uh, but you'll notice if I get rid of all this, all our orbs will be black because they are using this material, which is now empty. Okay. Uh, to get this working, let's use the Orbeez uh, thing, which should give us white, just like last time. Again, there should be a single vertex here that's black, but whatever. Most of these are above the night because there's 25,000 of them. Uh, same trick as before. We want to pass this through. Let's do a white noise first, just to make sure that there's actually the data in here. And you can, if you zoom in enough, it's, it will be hard to see with YouTube compression, but you can almost see these stripes of color. Um, and in this case, I think there's 482 vertices per sphere. How do I know that? Because I do. Uh, it's uh, 32 times 16. Um, so let's do math. We want to snap it so that each one gets its own thing. Snap it to the nearest 482. And you can see now each sphere um, it has a single value, which is getting seeded through this white noise, and it generates a random color. Now, if we were to take this and kind of just pass it through a BSDF, you can see it looks pretty good. You make it metallic, so it's, you know, metally, and you make it lower roughness, so it's shiny. And you can see this is kind of the look of the orb. So you could kind of stop here, or you could um, have them be all the same color, or we can actually pick colors just like we did before with the leaves. And that's what I'm going to do here, uh, just to go for a very Christmassy kind of wreath. But I, I have seen some uh, that have, like, all the colors just like we had before. So I'm going to color ramp these. I want some of them to be red as a Christmas color. I want some of them to be kind of orangey gold. And I want some of them to be, I guess silver is pretty good. But our orangey gold could be a bit more golden, so a bit more yellow, something like that. Um, and you're noticing that most of these kind of look orange, and that's because it's being selected somewhere in this continuum. I just wanted to pick one of these colors, so I'm just going to set this to constant. So it has to pick one of these shades, distribute to left, and it has to pick from one of these three uh, colors. So now we could really hone them in. So more yellow looks more gold. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I think, I mean, we could like add a little sparkle to these orbs, but I think at that point it's a bit overkill. Um, so now let's just kind of take this whole setup we have, uh, maybe fine tune it a bit and add it to our like procedural system. So uh, what I mean by that 
As you can see, we have some randomization with this random value. Uh, remember, we had, we had the seed from before. So again, anywhere we have randomness, I'm going to connect it. I want to also random, randomize the distribution of our points, which lead to the orbs. And I guess that's it, really. I, di I didn't do that for the leaves, but that's because they're just so tiny. Uh, so let's try this. I'm going to change the seed to 1 because it'll only change on integers. And yeah, not only do the leaves change, but so do the orbs. Change this to a different thing. And uh, we have the same kind of thing going on with a similar distribution, um, etc. So maybe like one of the uh, parameters we'd want to expose here that might give us a good amount of control that we'd like is the uh, density of the distribution. So maybe we want only a couple ornaments. This will make it look more sparse, or we could bring it up. Again, we are limited by this minimum distance. We can see now it's a bit more scattered. Um, these are all things we could do. We could. Um, in fact, just for the fine tuning, I want to bring down the largest scale it could be, because I think some of the orbs are a bit too big. So let's have it be like that big. And I, I really like the look of that. So uh, yeah, again, I just want to reiterate uh, this is completely procedural. That's how we made it. So if we want to do something a bit more complicated, like using a star as our base shape, this should just work after it's done calculating. There you go. Imagine doing that by hand every single time. Um, so at this point, I think I've taught you everything I have to teach you. So I'm now just going to set this up as like a basic scene that would like maybe with the spinning or something that's nice to render. And uh, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Concierge Render, a render farm. We'll get to that. Okay, so I took our procedural wreath node group, that thing that we slaved over for like two episodes now, um, and I applied it as the geometry node modifier that it was. So now it's just a mesh and I uh, spun it a bit. So now we have a very basic animation. It's two seconds at 24 FPS for 48 frames. And uh, let's just say that for some reason I want to render this. In reality, you'd probably take this, uh, put it in a scene that's actually a Christmas scene, and you know, it would make sense, but whatever. Uh, I want to render this, but it's a lot of geometry. It's 48 frames. If you don't have the fastest computer, this can be a big deal. Uh, this is where concierge render and the concept of a render farm comes in. So uh, you can outsource your rendering as long as you export out your bun file, you can outsource your rendering to concierge render. And then for a you know, fairly small price, depending on how fast you want to render, they'll render it for you. You download the images and that's it. So let me talk about uh, how to use that. So here's an example scene. We made it together. Uh, to export this and make it compatible with concierge render, here are the things to do. First of all, go to file, clean up, and then just go through the cleanup like list. So that, the recursive, just get rid of anything that doesn't need to be there. It will just make it a bit more lightweight. Uh, second of all, and this is far more important, go to external data and make sure this is enabled. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to pack any images or any assets that aren't in the blend file. It's going to put them in there. Um, in this case, we had an HDRI lighting this scene. I didn't mention, or no, we did set up the HDRI together. So that's a case of an image uh, that we want. Uh, in the bun file, otherwise the lighting won't be the same. So now we have the bun file, and uh, finally I'm just going to give this a new name. So I'm going to call this uh, for concierge. Okay, so we have a bun file perfectly prepared. Now, uh, in your favorite internet browser, mine's Chrome. I don't really care what, what yours is. Uh, go to conciergerender.com. If you don't already have an account, haven't heard about it, uh, make an account and you will get $5 in free render credits, which depending on your project could cover the whole project, seriously. And uh, here's the concierge render interface. You can see I have like $11.5 left over. Uh, should be plenty for this. Uh, we just need to upload our blend and then uh, get it rendering. So go to upload and launch projects. Um, we need to upload it since it hasn't been you know, there before. And it's called for concierge. And it should be kind of a big blend because there were like 3 million vertices or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to wait for this to upload and then we are going to launch it. Okay, just finished uploading. It's a 214 megabyte thing. That is all the geometry. Wow. Uh, either way, the blend is here. Uh, now we just got to launch it. So go to actions, go to launch render. It's going to think about it for a moment. And then we're just going to pick some settings. Um, a lot of these settings, by the way, are going to be imported from the blend file itself. So we're not going to need to pick cycles and all this. But... Uh, we do need to pick some settings. Okay, first settings, you want to pick the newest Blender version. In this case, it doesn't really matter because we already kind of like rasterized this into a mesh and all this, but whatever. Uh, 2.93 is fine. No idea what this is, but whatever. 2.93. Uh, cycles is already imported. Animations already imported. This is because we want to render 48 frames, not a still image, but an animation. 
uh, frames and resolution 1 through 48 so you can see it just rips it right from the bun file at a resolution of 1080p from the camera 400 samples all of this is fine uh, really you just want to pick you know obviously what you want but really the main choice you have here the most important thing is what uh, hardware do you want to use to render do you want to go up the list and use the fastest things like the fastest graphics cards eight times in video whatever I don't even I've never even heard of this graphics card it's so legit either way um, do you want to render it as fast as possible at a higher cost or do you not care as much still want to render fast uh, but don't want to pay extra for that I will always and have always used basic and that's been fine with me so uh, I'm gonna choose basic and then I'm just gonna choose render and then it's gonna be queued into the uh, job manager so we've created the job it's there click it go to view details and in a uh, minute you're gonna see that this progress bar is gonna slowly start creeping up as uh, more and more frames are rendered and then we can download them so I'll be back in a second okay finished rendering all the frames you can see it only cost a dollar to do 48 frames of like 3 million polygons so Pretty impressive. Let's just make sure that the render came out correctly. So here you can see all the frames. Just pick a random one. I'm just going to pick the first frame. And you can see like a small image preview of it. And that looks uh, correct to me. So uh, instead of downloading all of these PNGs yourself, just go to download outputs. It's going to make a zip file with 48 images in this case in there. And uh, yeah, concierge render. Check it out if you want to render faster or maybe your computer is not good or you just want to try it out.